What's up YouTube and welcome to another draw along with me where today we're going to create this really moody rose scene. Now as always there's links to everything you're going to need in the description down below and for today's design you'll just need the canvas size, the palette and the free dust brush that I've added in the description down below. If you've not installed brushes before I'll also leave a link to a really helpful video on how you can do that. Now if you do need it there is a stencil as well in the description so it's very very sort of rough. It will just give you a guide as to how to draw your petals and where to draw them. So use that if needs be, otherwise you can follow along with the video. As always, be sure to trust the process, which you can grab merch for in the description down below as well. And if you didn't already know, I post weekly tutorials here on my YouTube channel, but I also post three more every single month to a catalogue of over 60 now over on my Patreon. If you want to become a patron, there's a link in the description down below. And with all that said, let's get started. So once you've created your canvas and you've got today's palette, we'll go ahead and go to our layers. We'll go ahead and change our background color. So if we tap on background color and in the collection, we'll use this one in the top left, just a dark tone. And it's a slightly off gray. So we'll have that kind of nice sort of crushed black look to it. So once you've changed your background color, we'll get started on creating our rows. Now we're going to go ahead and go to our colors and we're going to grab the red in the middle of the top row. So it's the top of the second column. Your brush wants to be set to the option of calligraphy and we're going to use the monoline brush. Now my monoline brush, if we go to the stabilization tab, has a good amount of streamline on it and likewise stabilization. That will allow you to create some nice smooth lines without any sort of jitters in there. So tinker with your settings as you wish. Mine's 45% on the stabilization and max on streamline. And the brush size is going to be set to 7%. It may be easier to make it slightly bigger, but we're going to roll with that. You might be able to just about see my light sketch from my initial practices of this. So the first thing we're going to go ahead and do is just simply create a curve like so and hold your pen down to create a nice perfect arc. And you're going to want to create something like this. So smack bang in the middle of your canvas, a little arc like so. Then once you've done that, we're going to go ahead and just create a little bit of a flick outwards, create the body and round and into that petal. So we're going to go ahead and go around from the top. You may have to sort of adjust some of your line work later on, if needs be, just to sort of smooth up any joining lines that just run into each other. And then drag and drop the color in. We're then going to go ahead and go to our layers. We'll create a new layer and drag it underneath that main petal because that one needs to sit at the front. Everything else now will sit in behind. And roughly just over here, we're going to create another arc that sort of runs out into this point here and hold your pen down. So you can see roughly where that sits on that line. And then we'll just round off the edge a little bit and come down here and run that into the base and go all the way around to your start point so that you can drag and drop the color in. And I've created another leaf or another petal. Let's then go ahead and create another new layer and drag it underneath again. And we'll create our next one. And this one's going to start just a bit higher than the last one. So roughly over here, and I'll do it all in one motion. We'll create a nice rounded sort of tip on the end and just let that run in and go all the way around to our starting point. So that's the line that you need to make. So again, you can drag and drop the color in. We will go to our layers and we'll create yet another new layer and drag it underneath. We have to separate these so we can isolate the shadows later on. So this new empty layer at the bottom, we'll go ahead and start over here this time and create a little leaf just in there. Another petal, should I say? God, I will get that right, I promise. And again, we'll drag and drop the color in. Then we'll go to our layers again, create another new layer and drag it down underneath the last one we were just working on. So tap and hold on the layer and drag it down. And then we'll create the highest one. So we'll go ahead and create another one, a bit of a point on the end will look nice. It will just sort of match up with everything else and then go all the way around to your starting point. So that's the shape that we need to create up there and drag and drop the color in. We've got one more to make. So we'll go to our layers and create another new layer and we will drag it underneath. And we're going to start this one over here and just create a little bit of a flick outwards. Just let that run in behind like so and then link that at the top. And then drag and drop the color in. Now there's one thing I do want to do is if we go to our layers and create one more new layer and drag it to the bottom once more, we can add sort of a 3D look to this leaf or petal, should I say? Oh, again, I will get it right. So we go ahead and add in a 3D element to this petal here on the right. But we're just going to create a joining line up towards that point and just go round in a circle 
and then drag and drop the color in. So that way we've got the inside of this petal and likewise the outside, which is this edge here that we drew in. If you zoom out, this will be our shape for today's design. Now you can go ahead and adjust some of the layers if you need to. For example, I may move this one down just a little bit just so it's not quite so sticking upwards on its own. And now we've done that, we can then go ahead and create the leaves. So we'll go to our layers and create one more new layer and drag it all the way to the bottom. Go to our colors, we'll grab the middle color in the second column and we'll just go ahead and create some leaves. So they wanna be a little bit sort of spaced out from the body. And we're just gonna create a very basic leaf shape. Now something like this, drag and drop the color in. And I'll create another one over here. It doesn't have to match up in terms of height nor style, but just another one over here. I'll link that into there. Now we've kept a big gap in the middle because what we're gonna do is we're gonna add lots of shadows here. There's a top light coming down. And so this will all end up being shadowed in anyway. And then there's one more layer we need to go ahead and create. And that is the fold over of the leaf here at the front. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go to my layers and this top petal here, which is this main one, the first one here, I'm going to tap on it for a moment and I'm going to invert it. All that does is just invert the color to the opposite. And in this case, it changes it to blue. Because if I create a new layer and then go to my colors and grab the red again and make sure we're using the monoline brush still, what we can then do is go ahead and create a similar sort of arc that runs down here. So I've inverted it so I can see it just going to run this down all the way down to sort of this corner here and hold my pen down and then from the point up here I'm just going to introduce a bit of a, a fold over of one of the petals so just a little fold over like this and let that just run down into your point and then you should be able to drag and drop the color in now if you need to go ahead and see this a little bit better you could go ahead and turn off all your other petals in behind and see the work that it is you've done there and again you can go to your eraser. If we tap on the eraser and make sure we're using calligraphy and the monoline brush, we can just go ahead and just sort of tidy up this corner here and just let that sort of run in a little bit nicer. But you can see the fold over. Likewise, at the top, we could just go ahead and just iron out that a little bit more so it folds over a little bit nicer. And if we correct our layers again, so this one here we inverted to blue, we'll tap on it and invert it back to red and we'll turn on all the other red layers as well. So now we have everything we need to now start adding in some color. So this main big petal here on the left, I'm going to make sure we tap on this layer and we alpha lock it. If we go to our colors and we grab the top left color in the palette, and then we go to our brush library. For you, it will be under imported, which will be right at the very bottom of your brush library. But for me, it is in a textures collection. And in there, you'll find the dust brush. Now the size can be around about the sort of 19% mark. And all we're gonna to do to get started with is just go down that left edge, around the bottom, and just create a little bit of a casted shadow underneath the back end. To be honest with you, a lot of the shadows we add in now are just temporary because we're gonna add in much darker ones later on. We're gonna reduce the brush size down to about 10%, and this folded piece of the leaf that we added in here, the petal, should I say, if we just draw underneath it, we'll reveal that edge, and we wanna create a casted shadow. So I'm going to just bring my brush back up to about 18% and just go round that mark a couple of times, just creating that downward shadow. A little something like this. You can see I'm getting quite brave with chucking in the color and that's what we want. We want that fold over. It'll look really nice. And likewise, we'll then just darken up the bottom left corner a little bit more. And eventually this will actually all completely end as the same as the background color. I want that nice transition where you don't really know where the petals end and when they start. So we'll leave that like that for a moment. We'll go to our layers. I'm going to go down a layer. I'm going to leave the fold over for a second. And if you want to, if you're going to struggle to see all the shapes, you can either turn off the other ones or you can tap on the layer. We can go to the option of alpha lock and turn that on to start with. But if you go to the layer and tap on it and use the option of select, make sure color fill is turned off so it's nice and gray. And then on your screen, you should then, if you go back to your brush, be able to see the zebra lines, which show you the outline of your shape. And that will just help you nicely see where it is we need to go. So with my brush size set to about 15%, we're just gonna to go to town on adding in some more shadows. So again, because of the top light, underside of this petal here, we're just gonna introduce some color and then bring that round towards the base as well, because this is also gonna be nice and dark under here. 
a little bit of color there just underneath there like so and that's all we need to do on this particular instance let's then go ahead and work on the next layer so if we go to our layers and go down the next one is here and if we tap on it and we alpha lock it and we tap on it and we select it go straight back to your brush and we're going to want to go ahead and reduce the brush size maybe a little bit to 10 percent so we can be a bit more accurate and start quite low and introduce the shadow underneath the petal where it's sort of folding inwards into the sort of main sort of in area of the flower hopefully that makes some sense and i'm just going to give a light coat upwards just a tiny bit just to add in the tiniest bit of texture again these are basic shadows to get started with we'll probably adjust a number of them if we go to our layers and we go down to the next layer we tap on it we alpha lock it we tap on it and we select it go straight back to your brush and you can see the shape here on the left now this one here we want to introduce a shadow in here just where this one rolls down into this space and then just let that run up the edge a little bit as well like so let's then go to our layers and go down a layer tap on it alpha lock it tap on it select it go straight back to your brush and we're now adding in some shadows on the one at the very back so I just want to add in a light shadow. Essentially what I'm doing is I'm just painting in to start with and see what lands and then I can sort of work out the shapes of everything around it. And then this petal up here, for example, I can add in a nice shadow in behind here where it nicely just has a bit of darkness because of this one in front of it. And that's going to really add some nice stacking on top of one another. If we go to our layers and we go down a layer, tap on it, alpha lock it, tap on it, select it. And then we go ahead and zoom in on this top petal up here we can go ahead and go back to our brush and just add in a shadow underneath it. And likewise, when you start to draw this one in, you reveal the shape of this one that sits in front of it. So if I reduce my brush size to about 8%, darken up in here a little bit, I'll definitely darken up in behind it quite a bit as if this one just sort of casts a shadow onto it. And then that will nicely separate every layer. And we've got one more layer, which if we go to it, tap on it, alpha lock it, tap on it and select it. The shape is this extra little one that we made back here. And all I'm going to do is go back to my brush, give it a light coat from the bottom. And this is just the inside of this petal here as it rolls around the back of the flower. So we're just adding in sort of a, a 3D element in this sense. And then if we go ahead and tap on our selection tool for a moment, we can see some of the progress we've made. The next thing we need to do is add some shadows to this fold over and likewise the leaves. So if we go ahead and go to our layers, we go up to the fold over at the top and we tap on it and we alpha lock it. We don't need to select it because we can pretty much see its shape now because of everything around it. Brush size I'm going to make about sort of 14%. I'm going to darken up from the bottom as it folds itself back in towards sort of the main body and then I'm going to be very very sparing and give a very light shadow on this top edge so you can see how far outwards I am from the shape just introducing a little bit of sort of shadow on there I'll reduce the brush size down to 11% and just down this left edge introduce a little bit of a, a fold over shadow just a little one we want the whole design though to have some really nice texture to it so we'll just add in a little bit on there and then maybe just darken it up a smidge as it makes its way down into here. Then we'll go ahead and go to our layers and we'll go down to our leaves. We'll tap on them and we'll alpha lock them so we can't paint outside of them. And we will go ahead and darken them up too. So we're going to go ahead and in this space here just darken them up. And we want the leaves to really really sort of just completely dissolve into this space here. So I'm really darkening them up. Letting them get really dark creating a nice bit of gradient because the flower itself would block out all the light coming directly from above. Now I'm gonna reduce the brush size down to about sort of two or 1%. And in the leaves, I'm just gonna create that sort of central spine a little bit. So just a, a simple line or two, just in the center here. And maybe increase that up to about 3% and just create that spine in the center, going all the way back into the shadowy area. Because again, we're gonna get really dark here. And then with my brush size, maybe around the sort of 5% mark or seven even, sorry. I'm just going to darken up this bottom edge. I'm just going to darken up this bottom edge here where the, the leaf rolls around. 
the lighting rolls off and falls off completely. And I'll add a bit of a shadow towards the top edge again where the leaf rolls off. And then we're going to go ahead and just really darken this up. I was about to change the size, but I want to just darken this up, give the whole thing a nice gloss over. And you can see it really does just completely dissolve. It just transitions completely out of view. Now, if we make our brush size around that 4% mark, we can also go ahead and just darken up that spine a little bit more on the underside of it. So just sort of creating a bit more depth in the center there of the leaf. And then we'll do exactly the same steps over here. So we'll draw in a spine down the middle. I'm just going to keep the 4% for a minute. A little something like that. Brush size a bit bigger, about 8%, and just create that roll off shadow underneath. Let that roll off completely. At the top edge, we'll add in a bit of a shadow that runs up towards the point, but enough that you can see that top edge. And I can see too much of the shape, so I'm going to go ahead and just go over it again. Give everything a good nice coat. Now you don't want to go too far over to the right. We do want to have some green that shows on that right hand side. And zoom out, make sure that you're nice and balanced and your leaves should, should look like this, a little something like that. Now you can also go ahead and darken up the bottom edges again and again and again. But this is something we will build up throughout the whole of this. So let's go ahead now and adapt some of our shadows to kind of follow suit. So we're going to go back into our layers and we'll go to the main body of our petal, this big one here on the left, and we'll revisit it. We're going to go ahead and make the brush size around about 15% and be more and more risky with the shadows. In fact, I'm going to go big. I'm going to go 20%. I'm going to really darken up underneath that fold over. We want that to be super dark under there. I want it to be almost completely black. This left edge down here, especially towards the bottom edge, let's get rid of it completely. Let's just darken it up so it runs nicely into the background and then just leave a little sort of slither of the red in this space here, but we want it to be even skinnier than that because this particular petal is not getting a lot of light. We'll also run that shadow a little bit higher up towards that corner and round into this dark area here too. And zooming out, that is really, really dark, really moody. Let's then go to our layers and go down a layer to the petal on the right hand side. And again, same principles apply. We're gonna just darken it up, especially when it gets towards the bottom and just roll that up and go up towards the shadows you already made. So your brain kind of fills in the rest. Your brain sort of knows to sort of work out that there should be a body shape here somewhere. So just add in those shadows and be brave. And then these ones up here are not going to be quite as dark, but we can go in and just adjust a few of them. So I'll reduce the brush size and I've gone down to this layer here. I can just make sure inside there's nice and dark. And the rest I'm pretty much happy with. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and we'll start at the top with our fold over layer. We'll go to our colors and we'll grab this light pink color just beside it. So the third color on the top row. With your brush size set to about sort of five or six percent, we're going to introduce some highlights. So we're going to just bring this highlight down this edge here. And again, it's top lighting. So we want everything on the top edge to get a little bit of that light and it can just run off down a little bit. We're going to come back and add some more shadows, of course, to this in a second. We'll go to our layers. I'm going to skip the big petal on the left and I'm going to jump to the one on the right here. And we'll introduce that top down lighting just onto here on that top edge only and leave it be a little something like this and we can just blend towards our shadows a little bit. We'll go to our next layer which is this one here in the center and that can get some really nice lighting on it as well. Nice and bright towards that top edge and just let that sort of mix into one another. We'll then go to our layers. We'll go to the next petal and that's the one on the left hand side here just in the middle and we'll add a nice highlight on that top edge. Now it doesn't always have to be a big highlight, it can just be on that top edge only. We'll go to our layers and we'll go down a layer to this petal in the background, add in a nice highlight on there. And then we've got one more to add. So if we go to that layer right at the back, we'll just add in a nice highlight on there too. And we've really added in that lighting, which makes our shadows now not look quite so crazy because we've got that top down lighting. It sort of makes a little bit more sense. 
Now what I am going to go ahead and do though is I'm going to go back to the fold over layer and that is this layer here, the sort of folding layer at the very top. Go to the shadow color again and just reintroduce it from the bottom and overlap into some of those highlights a little bit. It creates a really beautiful transition. So I've sort of gone from the bottom there and just made my way up and the black over the top of those lighter tones looks really, really good. And you can do that for almost every layer. So if we go down to the petal on the right hand side over here, I can go up to meet those highlights a little bit more. And another sort of shadow we can add in is if we go to about 8%, we can add in a shadow here just where the fold over sits in front of that petal as well. So I'm just going to darken up in there and that will create some more separation between those layers. I'll blend that out a little bit. And again, you can go back and revisit any of these petals. I'm going to revisit the one at the very back up here and just blend that up towards those a little bit, just darkening up in there. And I'll go ahead and revisit this one. So grabbing that layer and just darken up in there just a tiny bit more like so. Now we do have highlights to add to the leaves as well. So if we go to our layers and go down to the leaves, we go to our colors and we grab the middle color in the third column, the lighter green. And then where the rose is sort of blocking the light on these edges towards the left, it's not really sort of achieving that. So this is just a little bit of the petal that's just sticking out a little bit or the leaf, should I say, that is getting some of the lighting. So I'll just add in a little bit of this lighter green here and that will be all that we add. And if we go ahead and zoom in, we go full screen with four, we end up with today's finished design. Just a really simple but very moody rose design. Now as always, please be sure to share your designs with me over on Instagram. I can't wait to see your finished creations. And a massive thank you as always to all of my supporters over on Patreon who help make these videos possible. If you want to get your name featured in videos, early access to videos, sneak peeks and much, much more, hit the link in the description down below. And if you haven't already seen, you can find the Trust the Process merch in the description as well. So if you like this video, you'll probably like this one on the screen now. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.